Because while you were sleeping, the National Weather Service posted another flash flood watch for tonight. And Sven, they're not messing around this time, are they? You know, you know, the ground is already just saturated from uh, all the storms we've been having lately. You know, this is the fourth wettest year on record so far already because of all the rain we've been having. And uh, of course, the snow earlier in the season. And I want to show you how narrow this swath of heavy rain was on top of Minneapolis yesterday. Literally uh, just about three and a half miles wide. And uh, in terms of length, just about 13 miles. A couple of inches of rain in about 90 minutes overwhelming the storm sewers there this morning. It is dry and quiet across the eastern part of the state. We do have thunderstorms dying out as they move into western Minnesota this morning, but uh, later in the day that potential for redevelopment flood watch from the Twin Cities south and east because of that uh, already saturated ground and because of all this humidity, those storms do have that potential to produce some pretty heavy rainfall amounts again. So once we head into the late afternoon, uh, keep your eyes to the sky. Yes, Ben, is, as you were saying, you know, about two inches of rain fell in downtown Minneapolis within 90 minutes. I mean, I was on Twitter at about four o'clock yesterday afternoon, and I kept seeing all these posts coming in from downtown Minneapolis. And I'm like, what the heck is happening down here? But it turns out, yeah, it was the storm that was just hovered over this area, and it was just swamping the area and making it such a mess down here. So let's show you more video from yesterday that a bunch of our crews got in from all over Minneapolis. One thing you could not miss were manhole covers. They looked like they're we're going to blow. The rain was beating down so fast and so hard, but it wasn't just downtown. You know, south of here near Bede Makaska, there was flash flooding as well. Cars almost got stuck in high water. And then over in Uptown, we found Gary Winshuttle outside with a saw because this storm caused him some stress. The rain was coming down pretty hard and I was filming it because it's so extraordinary hard. And then one of my employees called me and said, hey, who owns the white Jeep in our lot? And sure enough, that was me. Yeah, it was Gary who was chopping up a tree that fell on his Jeep, but he didn't think there was any major damage, so he seemed pretty okay with that. But hopefully nobody has to go through that this afternoon because as Sven said again, there's a flash flood watch in effect for the metro and parts south, especially along 35 headed down toward the Iowa border uh, through tomorrow morning. And then again, a likely chance of storms this afternoon as well. Gia? All right, Ellery, thank you. And to get the latest on the weather, download our new Care 11 app. We'd also love to see your storm pictures. Post them on our social media pages using the hashtag sunrisers. Of course, stay safe out there. All right, let's give you a look at the roads, what you're about to head into. If you're out of New Hope, we did have a crash. 169 southbound at Bass Lake Road blocking the right shoulder. It's not causing slowdowns just yet, but something we'll be keeping our eye on for you this morning. Now here's a look at today's top stories in your morning rush. We knew it was coming, but now a former Minneapolis police officer has officially appealed his murder and manslaughter convictions. Mohamed Noor is currently serving a 12 and a half year prison sentence for shooting and killing Justin Ruzchek Damon. His attorneys are accusing the judge of limiting Noor's right to a complete defense. Well, this is a real summer buzzkill for a lot of people. Swimmers, you still can't go to four Minneapolis beaches because they're too dirty. Three of the beaches with E. coli are at Bede Makaska, the fourth at Lake Hiawatha Beach. And all of this week's rain probably won't help. Crews will test the water again next Monday. Neighbors are trying to stop a company from building a bus barn in northeast Minneapolis. The Fridley Bay School Bus Company Metropolitan Transportation Network wants to relocate its corporate headquarters to 37th Avenue and University Avenue. Julie George lives about a half a mile from the proposed site. She's concerned with the 111 buses coming and going four times a day. The idling of buses beginning at 445 in the morning and the air pollution that's associated with diesel fuel. There also will be concerns about the traffic. The bus barn would add 110 full-time office positions and 200 seasonal jobs. The city of Minneapolis says it's reviewing the plans. Ice cream, get your ice cream. How does free ice cream sound? Sounds pretty good, right? Well, here's how you get it. All you have to do is head to Nicollet Mall from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's all part of Kemp's 10,000 Scoops Challenge. For every scoop of moose tracks they give out, the company will donate $1 to the Salvation Army. And that's your Wednesday Morning Rush. Let's take you live now to Capitol Hill, which is still reeling after a rare fight on the House floor as the House voted to condemn President Trump for what some call racist 
remarks. It's been a huge talking point online, so let's take a closer look in our digital dive. Overnight, President Trump tweeted about the vote. He says it was so great to see the Republican Party unified in their vote. 187 Republicans voted no. Despite that, the measure to condemn the president's comments was approved in the House. I'm Tracy Potts in Washington, where the House of Representatives, all Democrats and four Republicans, have agreed to condemn President Trump for what they call his racist attack against four women of color serving in Congress. Nancy Pelosi led the fight to condemn the president's words. On Twitter, he responded that it was a victory for him because Republicans were united in his favor. And of course, this story hits close to home for us. One of the lawmakers believed to be a target of that so-called attack is Minnesota Representative Ilhan Omar. So on the CARE 11 Facebook page, we've been asking, what do you think? Well, let's check in with our, some of our Sunrisers. Nick said the president on his, he con commended the president on his valiant words of truthfulness. Well, Sam says though, we need a separation of social media and state along with a reminder of the separation of church and state. Some of you agree? And Mary, well, she said, can someone please tell me what the point of the condemnation was? It seems even though there was a winning vote for Congress, there are really no repercussions to this. Yeah, there's, this is really more symbolic than anything else. Uh, I think a lot of people are saying this kinds, these kinds of conversations, race, gender, class, definitely as a country we need to dive deeper into, I think, but doing it on Twitter is right. not a really intelligent space to and do of that. Of course, with all the debates right. here still coming up, we're going to see a lot more about this topic. Sure, sure. All right, let's head over to Sven for the one thing weather. What's up, Sven? Well, we're watching the potential for more storms later in the day that could produce some heavy rainfall. We do have that flood watch, so we're tracking the latest on those storms and also talking about more hot weather on the way coming up. And your time 608 still dealing with this crash out of New Hope. If you're waking up there, heads up 169 southbound blocking the right shoulder. Now it is starting to cause a little slowdown near Bass Lake Road. So if that's your route, give yourself a few extra minutes. All right, time to connect the dots now where we take a story that's a bit complicated and make it a little easier to understand. This morning we're talking about Area 51 and that viral Facebook event to quote, see the aliens. We've been talking about this for a couple days. See the aliens, yeah. not supposed to be a joke, but some people though, taking it very seriously. Larry Seward connects the dots. If you've spent any time on the internet lately, you've probably seen something about the plan to storm Area 51, but what's going on? Let's connect the dots. First things first, don't storm Area 51. It's a bad idea. They're guys with guns and they're authorized to shoot you. But a Facebook event called Storm Area 51, They Can't Stop Us All, seems to be suggesting everyone do just that on September 20th. By the time it hit the news, thousands of people had already signed up to go. No one is really sure where the idea came from, but here is one thing we can tell you. It's not real. It appears to be a joke designed to generate memes. In fact, the creator of the Facebook event page is Supreme Memes. While there may be some outliers out there who are taking this seriously, most people are just having fun posting about what they are going to do with the alien they bring home. So while we can all relax and dust off our favorite flying saucer jokes, you still might want to avoid Nellis Air Force Base on September 20th. That's not going to stop people from going, though. You Pretty know there's sure. people out there. Yep, there's going to be a crowd. They want to see the aliens. All right, one microphone, one mission. Coming up, the important message being broadcast is here in Minnesota that could change your life. Then. You know, grabs a hold of me. I'm really scary and threatened with his knife. This is such a bizarre story. Back in the arms of her family, this woman's battle to stay alive after escaping a would-be attacker. And it was a violent weekend in downtown Minneapolis. What the police chief plans to do today to help keep you safe. 